So today I'm talking about a P2096 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P2096 code? Well, it's a post catalyst fuel trim system to lean bank one. And what does this mean? Well, there's oxygen sensors, they're located on the exhaust and they do two things. The first thing they do is they monitor the catalytic converter. And then the second thing they do is they monitor how much oxygen was burnt off during combustion. And then the computer uses this information to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders. And for some reason, this bank one sensor one upstream oxygen sensor is reading that this air fuel ratio mixture is off that there's more air going into the cylinders than should be and so it's gonna have to be troubleshoot no why and if you have a v6 or v8 engine bank one side of the engine is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder so if you find the number one cylinder that side is gonna be bank one and then the opposite of that would be bank two and one thing about a p2096 code is that it can be kind of difficult to troubleshoot since it can be caused by so many different things be sure to be paying attention to any other codes that you might be getting because those will help point you to what the problem is. For example, if you're getting like a MAF sensor code, like a P0101 or something like that, then you know that'd be some kind of issue going on with the MAF sensor. But basically, be sure to pay attention to any other codes you might be getting. And so what are some possible causes of a P2096 code? Well, the first thing that can cause this is going to be that it has a bad O2 sensor. That sensor might have just gone bad and just be reporting bad information back to the computer. So it can't be tested to see if it has gone bad. I made a video on how you go about testing in that O2 sensor. I'll put a link down below if you need to check that out. But the first thing that could cause this is going to be a bad oxygen sensor. The next thing that can cause this is that there's some kind of issue going on with the MAF sensor. It's dirty or it's just gone bad or something like that. Quite often these MAF sensors just get dirty and they just need to be cleaned back up and they'll go back to working. That's very common. You could get some mass airflow sensor cleaner. You could clean them up real good, put them back in, clear the code, and then see if it comes back. But the next thing that can cause this is going to be the mass airflow sensor. The next thing that can cause this is that there's going to be some kind of vacuum leak going on around the engine, which basically means like one of the hoses going in is broken or it has a bad gasket like on the valve covers or something like that. All the air going into the engine should be going through the throttle body. And if it's not, if air is leaking in from some other location up on top of the engine somewhere, then that can throw things off and cause issues. And that's basically a vacuum leak or an intake air leak. There's some different ways to go about trying to find a vacuum leak. Some mechanics will carry around like a spray. They'll start up the engine. And then if they think they know where the leak's at, they'll spray the spray. And if the engine idle changes, then they'll know they found the leak. Another method is the smoke machine method, where you feed smoke into the intake manifold. And wherever the smoke comes out, then you know where the leak's at and you'll be able to fix it. So there's some different methods for trying to find a vacuum leak. But the next thing on the list is going to be a vacuum leak. The next thing that could cause this problem is that there's an exhaust leak going on and this would be something like a hole in the exhaust or a bad gasket or something like that where basically outside air is getting into the exhaust and it's just throwing those oxygen sensors off and just causing issues so you can examine your exhaust mainly on that bank one side of the engine just be sure there's no leaks going on and the next thing that could cause this problem is going to be that there's a fuel delivery problem on bank one and this would be something like a bad injector low fuel pressure a bad fuel rail pressure sensor or something like that and the way you could go about trying to check to see if this is a problem is that you use a fuel pressure gauge and you attach it to the fuel rail up on top of the engine and then you start the engine and you check to see what the fuel pressure is every vehicle is going to be rated to be running a little bit differently so you have to look up what your fuel pressure is supposed to be rated to be running at but say your engine is supposed to be running at 60 psi but for some reason when you check it it's running at 50 psi then you know there's a fuel delivery problem and this would be something like a bad fuel pump a clogged fuel filter or something like that it's also possible that one or more of the fuel injectors on bank one is having issues that's just gone bad or it's clogged up or something like that and again there's some different ways to go about trying to find out if a fuel injector is bad or not one method is if you could remove the spark plugs one at a time on bank one and just check to see how they're burning because depending on what's going on inside the cylinders they're going to burn differently and there's spark plug burn charts online that you can match them to and you can tell exactly what's going on inside the engine but basically if the tip is really black then that means that it's running rich that means it's getting too much gas but if the tip is really white then that means that it's running lean and it's getting more air inside that cylinder and so if you find a cylinder like this then you could test the injector on that cylinder or you could swap it out with another one and just see if the problem follows and things like this but the next thing that can cause this is going to be a bad injector and the last thing on the list is going to be that the catalytic converter is clogged up and having issues when these get old they can become clogged up with material and different things like this and that causes problems with the engine because it can't push the exhaust out very easily it has to really work to push all the exhaust out and when they become all clogged up like this they're going to get hotter before than after the catalytic converter because when the catalytic converter is operating correctly, it should be hotter after the catalytic converter than before the catalytic converter. But this is going to change if it's clogged up and it's going to be hotter before. And so if you have a good scan tool, you can check to see what the temperatures are. And from this, 
You can tell if the catalytic converters failed or not. You can also use a low cost laser temperature reader. Let the car warm up for like at least 20 minutes and then check to see what the temperature is before and then after the catalytic converter. And if it's hotter before, then you know there's an issue with that catalytic converter. I made a video on this. I'll put a link down below if you need to check that out. But the last thing on the list is gonna be that the catalytic converter's just gone bad and it's all clogged up in there. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing the engine with the P2096 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.